because Jaguar Land Rover's chief executive, Thierry Bolloré, is on the line and I can see him. And can you hear me, Thierry? Yes, very well. Tristan. Excellent. Definitely. Wonderful. OK. Tell us about Reimagine. Kick, kick us off with a kind of broad view of what, what you're trying to, to get to, what it means for the brands, for the business. Well, fundamentally for the brands, it means the renaissance of the Jaguar brand. So far, we position Jaguar in the segments of the modern luxury and not in a premium or mid-premium segment, which does not fit with the brand. And in addition to that, it's clear that for Jaguar, we have decided to go full electric, which means that the portfolio we are going to present by 2025 will be naturally full electric. That's the first point. Of course, on the Land Rover side, we have also a very similar path that we want to perform, which means that uh, with enjoying the simplification with only two platforms, we make it such that we have an offer which will be also for all models in the future, again by 2024, in that case, also full electric. So this is a very, very important element for us because by experience, we know that we can offer full electric, sustainable mobility to our customers and enhance the capabilities of our products, uh, which is above and beyond, as, as you know. So it's absolutely major for us. So Concerning what has to be in place? Just, sorry to interrupt you. Just, just give us a sense then of what needs to be in place, what the ingredients are. That, that get you to, to full electrification. And that's, that's the second part of your question concerning the business. For the business, it means a lot of investments in technologies, because with the full electric cars, you can offer, as I say, enhanced capabilities, and you have to position the company on the best of the technologies to offer ultimate customer experience. And for that, you need, of course, investments, and you need to consider how do you want to master your control points of these technologies to control the customer experience and make sure you are, of course, positioned on the new value chain that this represents. So, of course, to be practical, it means EDUs, it means the batteries, the cells, the pack, as well as the modules. You need to, of course, have a enhanced capabilities in terms of software, not mentioning, of course, autonomous driving capabilities. And all that together uh, means that you are preparing the company for it. But it's not enough. It's not enough. You also need to make sure that the ecosystem into which you are preparing all that is really making such that for your users and your customers, it's a seamless experience. For example, charging infrastructure. This is absolutely necessary to make it such that for any of our user, you will not even have to think about it. It will happen. It will be easy to always find what you need or even have it down by somebody uh, for, for the ultimate experience that we are preparing. That's absolutely critical. If we imagine for a second then that this is a successful strategy, kind of give us a vision, give us a sense of where you see the opportunities for you then as, as, as a major global business based here in the UK. What, what, give, give us your kind of sense of, of where you can get to in a reasonable time frame based on all of this happening. I think the time frame we expressed it in the reimagined strategy presentation. So we said that, uh, as I mentioned, by 2025, our offer will be including full electric and not only for, for Jaguar new portfolio, but also for Land Rover. Then, uh, gradually speaking, and depending on the evolution of the demand from customers, we will go fully electric for everything we will manufacture. You need to consider that on our top markets, uh, which are, of course, the UK, uh, Europe, China, North America, there is a kind of convergence of the regulations anyway moving in that uh, same direction, which is clean mobility, and we want to position ourselves on that. So, for me, the opportunity in the UK is, of course, absolutely uh, fantastic. You know, there is a clear orientation which has been given. There is a, we have permanent contact with our government and all authorities, and it's uh, very much encouraging ourselves to make it such that we are making happen, especially in the UK, but not only, the creation of our positioning on these control points and value chain that I've just mentioned beforehand. The key element for us in that, on that journey is, of course, the condition of the competitiveness and of the innovation. Competitiveness means, 
if you take, for example, batteries manufacturing, it's a lot with uh, clean and affordable energy. It's a lot about taxation. It's a lot about the competitiveness of our installation at a certain level of, uh, of labor costs, naturally. Uh, it's about speed a lot. You know, we are on the in the urgency mode to a certain extent with our calendar, with our commitments, and uh, internally we we are here to master what we are doing, but externally as well, uh, we, we share that sense of urgency with all our authorities in order to make it happen as quickly as possible. Yeah. I've got to ask you a shorter term thing, Thierry. We were hearing earlier in our, in our day-long conference about the shortage um, of um, uh, semiconductors and, and the impact that, that that's uh, having. I, is that affecting you and how long do you expect it, if it is, to, to carry on? No, no, it's a real storm uh, for the industry, no doubt with that. We could mitigate the shortages which were already on the market since the beginning of the crisis, uh, which was the beginning of this year especially. And uh, you could see our excellent results of the last fiscal year, thanks to that mitigation. However, a certain number of accidents occurred in Japan with some suppliers and also in Texas. And all that together has created an even stronger storm. And we are affected. It, and it's, for me, it's going to last. It's going to last because uh, we have learned that because we're not in direct contact, you know, with our uh, macro processor suppliers. It's our tier ones who are in contact with them today. And we have learned the, the difference of clock speed of this industry compared to our industry. And for example, we need to have long term commitments in terms of uh, ordering in order to make sure that the capacities are available for what you need. These type of things were not really taken into account for sure, not by us because we were not facing them directly, but not even by our tier ones. So to restructure and re, uh, reorganize the supply chain in order to make sure that uh, we are on pair with uh, these uh, uh, microprocessor suppliers is going to take a little bit of time, but that's the direction we need to take. And more broadly, I would see on, from my standpoint that the, the, the OEM, the car industry, with some very uh, limited number of exceptions, I've not considered that the car is so much of the next uh, connected object, Internet of Things to a certain extent, and as such uh, needs to be very much interested by the microprocessor industry very directly. Yeah, yeah. that's such an interesting point. And that brings me to what I think probably has to be a, a, a last question, but again, going back to something that we were discussing earlier on in our conference and it's about skills and and the differing skills that will be needed in the future as as you make the transition that you've just been talking about um and new value chains etc etc what where do those skills come from what's your thinking about the need the differing needs that you're going to have for differing skills in in the medium term future well i think the the, the scales is about also simplification. If you take uh, the example of our company, we, we, we get from uh, more than six platforms to three platforms. We can enjoy with the new platform EMA that we are designing at the moment, more than 300,000 units. It's not millions like the big, big animals, you know, can, can perform, uh, you know them. But when you start having 300,000 units for one platform, which is really well commonalized, then you, you start enjoying scale anyway. The scale is also coming from the type of partnership that you can create. For example, we are, we are, we are working very intensively with some companies of the Tata Group. And from that standpoint, we are, we are taking advantage of the scale, uh, for example, TCS on the software side, uh, which is a very strong partner. So, the, the way to partner internally and also externally, still mastering your control points on the new value chain is, of course, the way to make it such that you are permanently at the top of innovation and, of course, of technologies. Thierry Bollier, thank you so much for sparing the time uh, to talk to us, to talk to the SMMT conference. Really good to hear from you. Uh, thanks and uh, all the best. All the best for the future. Thank you, Justine. Right. Bye -bye.